number two. That you should create a UML class model and the corresponding table. So we've already kind of notated this from our notes, right? So now we're going to use our Lucid chart to create that. And we do that by starting with a blank, a blank diagram. And then we're going to go to that gear and we're going to activate the UML notation library. If I click on that, once I click on this checkbox, I could then turn around and specifically, I, I need the class diagram. Uh, I mean, I could unclick everything else so that I don't have confusion and the entity relationship. So UML and entity relationship. Um, and then you can cross it and you'll see it at the, on the side. So your UML class, we're going to use two sections for every UML class. Remember, the name is on top, the attributes are in the middle, and the bottom portion has any stored procedures or any methods that are associated with that class. In this case, we're just going to forget about the methods and just grab the dual lines with the name and the attributes. We already know the attributes. Not only are they in your table that you finished up at the end, which are over here, right? In your database notation. So I can already do this by grabbing the finished inventory table and so forth and and I could grab them from there. Or I can download the actual spreadsheet that I have, right? My data for Microsoft Access Project, which is also the same as the database that's going to be on your chapter. And I can start with my cache table, and I see what the attributes are. Which one is my primary key in here? Account number. So I can always just grab these. Bring them back to my uh, BPMN, I'm sorry, to my UML. And I can replace what's in here. You have to download it, right? Where do I get it? It's from, you can download it from your Blackboard or you can download it straight from your Connect, same thing. And I can just paste this. And then once I paste it, I'm just gonna make sure that I get rid of this, all the spaces. I'm gonna let this. I'm gonna let the professor know that this is a primary key, right? On description, what is the name of this class? Oh, classy. Okay, cash, right? So eventually, it should look like. Something like this, right? Not exactly that one, but it should look like that, right? Maybe not as complicated. Maybe three tables less, but it's gonna be fancy. It should look like this, actually. We already have it, right? So let's start creating that. So we have cache. Let's bring it all the way down. What kind of resource, what kind of, what kind of class is this? It's a resource, correct? So where it says interface, let's call it a resource. Resource cache. And we're going to bring another class that's called, what is D? Cache receipts. Let's make sure that's the same name that we're using on our database. It is indeed cache receipts. And these are all the attributes. So I can come paste them. Um, I can just go like this and paste them. And this is cash receipt. So I'm just copy pasting that from the spreadsheet. Cash receipt, which one is my primary key? Uh, 
That's going to take a while. What kind of uh, resource is this, or what kind of uh, class is this? REA. Is it a? So what is it? Cash receipt would be a. It would be an event. I received cash, so that's an event. All right. Then I go in here and I look at the multiplicity. So how do I add that relationship between those two? I'm going to grab this and connect it to the other U. And I don't want it to have an arrow, so I'm going to say none. Here on the top, I can switch that connection to none. How did I use that? I just grabbed, just like we remember the flow of documents. So I go to the red dot and I go to the other red dot. Click and drag. Question. How do I do the second line of event? Uh, you mean this middle line? Oh, yeah, yeah. So control, that was right. Nick, control, enter. Sure, if they're already there. I'm not interested in the type, but, you know, just keep it in there. It's okay. Get it wrong. I'm not going to analyze you for that. All right. So let's see if, well, you don't have to put the primary key here. So let's get rid of that. Are we ready for the next table? Let's go to customers. So the customers is going to be another table right here, or another class, I should say. In customer, what kind of class is a customer? It's an agent. Looks like Chansura is the only one in here. What's going on, Danny? All right, so this is customer or client. Let's look at the spreadsheet. It says that it's because I should have gone in order. Um, they're called actually retail customers. That's annoying, but okay. So let's do the right one. So it's called retail customer, right? You get the drill when it comes to your attributes what you need to do right now every customer associated with my cash receipts it's also associated with the orders right so then i have to unite them with my cash receipts and then let's go into the direction of the endpoints they should have none so how do i add multiplicities if you select that line that unites them you can add the multiplicity by right clicking on it and click on the add multiplicity button right there. So once again, I selected the line, I selected the line and then, oh, you don't have to right click, you just select it and it just gives you that ability, right? So I add the multiplicities. What is the multiplicity for this? Cash, every cash receipt has to have how many cash accounts? exactly one and certain cash accounts could have zero to many cash receipts correct so my cash accounts can have zero because there's some accounts that i don't use for deposits and the ones that i use could be receiving multiple deposits and in fact that's our goal is to make sure that we keep receiving multiple cash receipts and so that's done any question on how to do that Yes, am I going too fast? Raise your hand, please. On the step, like under retail customers, 